Sometimes to come up with the right answer, we must ask the right questions. For instance, what is the mark of a good Christian? What is the mark of a good Buddhist priest? What is the mark of a good Muslim? What is the mark of the beast? To come up with the right answer, we have to ask the right questions. In order for me to be a good man of God, I have to embrace His Word. The Bible says to write the Word upon the table of your heart. In other words, I have to become indoctrinated with the Word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. That's what the scripture says. Embracing the word of God. I hold it in my hand. The scripture says to hold fast that which is good. This is good. I hold fast. I embrace it. It's in my hand. And since I embrace it, it's in my hand, it's in my heart, it's forever in my head, in my forehead. So I meditate on his word. The Bible says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. So the mark of a good saint of God, the mark of a good man of God, or a Buddhist priest, or a Muslim, is the doctrine that he embraced. That's the mark. The beast has indoctrinated us to embrace his system. His system. In the book Secrets of the Temple, how the Federal Reserve runs the country. Very, I would say it's a very insightful book. It's, uh, it's, it's an insightful book and I encourage you to read it. On page 53 of this book, about the um, end of his, uh, about the, at the end of this page, it reads, feverish polemics that portray the Fed as the Sanhedrin of today were ludicrous in their particulars, but they were based on an ancient cultural reality about money that was still valid in the age of enlightenment and computers. Above all, money was a function of faith. It required an implicit and universal social consent that was indeed mysterious. To create money and use it, each one must believe, and everyone and everyone must believe. Only then did worthless pieces of paper take on value. When a society lost faith in money, it was implicitly losing faith in itself. I disagree with that statement, but I'm going to continue on. In the advanced economics of Western capitalist nations, this fundamental social bond had been managed for several centuries by ordinary mortals, working in institutions devoid of religious trappings. The money process, nonetheless, still required a deep, unacknowledged act of faith so mysterious that it could easily be confused with divine powers. This is what this guy says. He's pro. Federal Reserve and um, he's anti conspiracy theorists so this book is really an apology for the Federal Reserve but that paragraph that I just read he 
actually admits to the um, domestic quality of the banking system. So there's no way around, uh, in my opinion, there's no way to overshadow its mystic's power. That's why he called it the secrets of the temple. 